Eagle 7 here, and in this video we'll discuss a shallow approach to a run on landing. We use a shallow approach to a run on landing when high density altitude, a high gross weight condition, or some combination thereof is such that a normal or a steep approach cannot be made because of insufficient power to hover. And remember in my previous videos we talked about aircraft performance, high, hot, and heavy. And in another video we talked about vortex ring state and settling with power. So to compensate for this lack of power, a shallower approach and a run on landing makes use of our translational lift until surface contact is made. Translational lift or effective translational lift, sometimes referred to as ETL, is basically that relative wind. By us moving forward, we have airflow over our main rotor. That makes that main rotor a lot more effective at creating lift at a lower power setting. So with our power limitations on a very hot day or flying into a airport with a high density altitude or a very heavy aircraft, we can make use of this shallow approach by not needing as much collective or power and by traveling more than 30 knots around 50 knots we stay above ETL so we have a few factors working for us as opposed to against us we have forward airspeed that creates the relative wind that makes the rotor disc more effective and the more effective rotor disc requires less engine power and that will allow us to make a, a very shallow approach and land without having to make large power adjustments at the bottom to maintain our hover. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that procedure. So again, we're set up at Nellis Air Force Base. The airport is at over 1,800 feet. Uh, we have about a 103 degree day and our aircraft is at, at max gross weight, about 19,000 pounds. And in our previous video you saw that if we make a steeper approach, we don't have the power at the bottom to increase our collective, to slow our rate of descent, and we hit the ground. And then we talked about a recovery procedure for that, would be to either stop or lower the collective slightly, lower the nose, increase our airspeed, and fly out of that settling with power or VRS condition. Now with a shallow approach, we don't have to worry too much about that because we're going to keep our airspeed above 30 knots. We're going to keep our sink rate below 300 feet per minute rate of descent. And we should need less power as we cushion that aircraft onto the ground and roll out. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I'll bring up the controls and unpause. So keeping our airspeed at about 50 to 55 knots, get our sink rate. Less than 300 feet per minute rate of descent. And you can see our engine, torque, and rotor are all in the green. And as we get close to the runway, we want to just level out the aircraft slightly to a level attitude. rest our descent with just a little bit of collective until our wheels touch, maintaining directional control of the rudder pedals, slowly decrease our collective, and apply gentle braking to stop. And we saw in that scenario at no time did we exceed our torque limitations, our TGT limitations, our rotor did not go low. Everything remained in the green. So a shallow approach to a run on landing can be used when we have insufficient power to make a normal or a steep approach. 
And in another video, we'll talk about the shallow approach to a run-on landing with one engine out. Great procedure, the shallow approach to a run-on landing with one engine out. I hope you found this helpful, and we'll see you on the next one.